Counter-Strike 2 fans, if you found this video, then I'm guessing you're like me and you're trying to improve your skills at the game. But let's be honest, it's not easy. I bet you've watched hundreds of YouTube videos, you've changed your crosshair, you've learnt smoke lineups, you've done aiming training scenarios, you've used workshop maps. But there's one thing that I've found that I needed to give a try. It's Aim Labs Plus, and I've bought it so you don't have to. In this video, I'm going to run through the features that you get that are predominantly linked to Counter-Strike 2 to see if it really does make a difference to the gameplay. I have been using it for a while already to get a feel for how it works, so I can talk you through a little bit on what I've seen and how I've seen it adapt. But there are two things that you get. You get specific training maps that teach you the fundamentals of the game, and you also get universal sense finder which is something that i was quite excited for finding my sensitivity has been truly truly difficult and this seems to help me get an idea of where i play best at the game so let's dive right into it and i'm going to show you what aim labs plus is like so you don't need to buy it thanks for watching and let's get straight into it okay so this is Aim Labs Plus. I'm sure you've used some other things for your training. There are many other uh, apps like this. This is one that I've been using for a, a long time now, and I've seen it improve month after month, year after year. The only downside I would say to this is it seems to lean slightly towards Valorant as a game, which is a little bit frustrating, but I'm guessing really the fundamentals are the same. I have played Valorant, and if you take away the hero abilities, the gunfighting is very much the same thing. So. I have paid for Aim Labs Plus and I'm going to show you what you get when you do that. So this is Aim Labs. If I click here, it takes me to my uh, profile screen and you get presented with a few things. So the first thing and the thing that was the most exciting for me was this Universal Sense Finder. What that does is while you're playing the game, it adapts the sensitivity of your mouse to kind of decipher which sensitivity you play best at. It also has adaptive tasks, so as you play through some playlists, it will throw specific tasks and features at you. And then also, it has this section here. So, you can, and they've got Counter-Strike 2 specific ones, fundamentals of the game. So, the first one is Fundamentals 1, which is aiming in Counter-Strike 2. And then the other one is, let me see if I can find it here. Uh... No plans available, great. Oh, it's because I've completed it. So you've got CS2 Fundamentals 2, which is Introduction to Mechanics, and then you've got Fundamentals 1, Aiming in Counter-Strike 2. So I'll take you through both of those so you can get a feel for it. I'm not convinced on these, but what I am convinced on is the Universal Sense Finder. So I'm going to click into a training plan that I do. Found it ages ago. It's pretty good for me. And I'm just going to show you how how it kind of adapts to the way that I play. So it's called the Global Elite CSGO warm-up map, map playlist, whatever. We're going to click play, and it's going to take us straight into this, um, this game mode. And here's how it works. So it's going to present me with a task. I'm, if you've not played Aim Labs before, it's going to give you specific tasks to do. And within those tasks, while I'm playing, the sensitivity is going to change. And I'll try and call it out when it does it. I'll show you all of these warm-ups, and I'll probably skip through some of them. So if it speeds up, it's just because I'm trying to get it through to the end and there's not much content in there. But this is the first one, and hopefully I can call out when the sensitivity changes. So here we go. Let's go. Watch how bad I am at this as well, by the way. Right now, wow, this is just pathetic to watch, but here we go. So, all you're doing is you're resetting, you're clicking, you're resetting, you're clicking, you're resetting, you're clicking. Now, I've not felt it change yet, but I'm sure it will. It'll probably get slower at some point. I think it might have just upped it a tiny bit because I seem to be overshooting. It's definitely got slower now. It's reducing the, the uh, sensitivity. And... It's just trying to figure out where I think, I'm guessing it's where I'm, oh, I missed that one, I'm fast and accurate. That's what it's looking for. It's definitely lowered the sensitivity. So I'm just going to keep clicking through this. I might speed up this section just to get it to the end. Oh, it sped it up again. 
now the sensitivity is a lot higher. I can definitely feel that that's gone up. Yeah. Okay, whoa. Right, so then what happens is, and you, this is interesting now, because what it tells you is you should play the same task ten times, and once you play the same task ten times, you will start to get a confidence rating. So if you look here, you can see now that it's giving me a confidence rating of 98%. I've played this task a fair few times. I don't think it actually tells me how many times. But it's telling me 1.03 is the is the sensitivity that I should be playing at. Now my mouse is on 400 DPI. So I've got it on the lowest it can possibly go. I did try on 800. But I found that 400 was better for me. I tend to shake quite a lot. And just reducing some of those micro movements has, has helped a little bit. So that's the first the first task on this uh, CS2 warm-up. We're just going to keep playing through it. So as I said, I might speed speed some of these up if there's not much going on. But it is changing while I play. So let's try this one. Now I'm going to call out something that I noticed when doing this that I found quite frustrating. It does, it does get it wrong. So, guys... There are times when it's telling me that I should have a higher sensitivity. Sometimes it goes all the way up to 1.3, 1.4. And on some of these tasks where you're not making that... Now, look, it's gone really slow. The, the sensitivity is a lot lower. On some of these tasks where you're not doing big movements, it will tell you that a, a lower sensitivity is better. But... That's just because I don't have to move the mouse very far, so it thinks that when the sensitivity is low, I'm actually more accurate, but I'm not. It's just because I don't really have to move the mouse very far. So that is, a, I guess, a downside to using this. You've got to kind of understand that some of these scenarios, they don't require much movement. So, I mean, you could have it on... See, there you go. There's the example. So it's dropped it down to 0 0.76, and it's saying that it's 86% confident. And that's because whenever I do this challenge, there's less movement and a lower sensitivity is just as good as a higher one because I'm not over flicking. I don't need to move very far. So it thinks I need a lower one. So in the beginning, I was getting confused. Why? I don't understand. You know, it's telling me I need high. It's telling me I need low. And then I started to realize it was based on the type of task and you've kind of got to find the middle ground or at least pick the one that comes up the most for you when you're playing. So I'm just going to keep playing through, and you'll see how it changes. So I'm just going to speed this one up. Oh, yeah, yeah. So for this one, you're going to need a higher sensitivity, or you're not going to be able to keep up with the damn thing. If you had a low sensitivity here, you would not be able to do this, and, and it might change at some point, and you'll see what I mean. So now it's quite high. I can tell it's high. So I'm just going to keep going with this. Yeah, it slowed it down, you see, so I'm... Okay. okay. It's, I keep saying slowed down, but I mean lowered. So if I say slowed down, I mean lowered. Oh, that was nice. It seems to be keeping it at a pretty consistent level, which I'm guessing is because it's starting to understand where I sit in that kind of sensitivity range. Oh, yeah, it's lowered it now. So here you see, I've got to really swing on my mouse to get it to find the target. And when I lose the target... It's hard for me to get it back because it's moving so slow. I mean, you do, okay, let's see what it says. 1.4. So now it's gone up because in this task, I needed to move a lot around the room. I need to be able to do quick movements to get to the target. So it's gone, bang, straight back up to 1.4. It's saying it's 70% confident because whenever I do that task, I seem to sit around, around, that, um, around that level. So... Hope you're getting a kind of a feel for how it works. Now, personally, I actually think this is really useful, but it does take some time for you to kind of bed in. You will need to do these tasks 10 times. I think it says around 10 times before you really get the benefit of the sense finder. And look, I guess once you do it once and you get the sensitivity, you, if you wanted, you could cancel the subscription and you don't need to keep paying for it. But I do think this is useful. You just need to understand the tasks you're playing. Take it with a pinch of salt for some of it. So that last task, for, as, for an example, 
It's telling me I need a high uh, sensitivity, not because I need it to be more accurate, but if I can't, I'm guessing it's because it's starting around, to understand can't keep up where I sit in that kind of sensitivity. There are times when you're playing that one and the range of motion is uh, a lot slower, you just can't keep up with it. So it's not going to give me a low sensitivity. You've got to find that middle balance. So for me, I think the middle balance is 1.05, seems to be where it sits. So that is Universal Sense Finder. Look, if you're trying to find your sensitivity and you're struggling to understand which one works for you, I really would recommend this. After doing this for quite some time, I have taken that sensitivity in game and I've found that I've been more confident at least and it has led to more accuracy and better play style because I understand the amount of sensitivity I've got. So I definitely recommend giving that one a try. I'm not going to play through all the other tasks because you can kind of get a, a picture of what um, what it will what it will do as you play. The next thing I wanted to show you, and, and then it asks you if you want to keep the sense. So I'm going to use that one because I know that that one's probably more like it. The next thing I want to show you is the learn section. So this is something I'm not too sure about if I'm if I'm being completely honest. I get the idea, I get what they're trying to do, but the majority of the information in these sessions you can pick up on YouTube pretty quickly. So basically what you get is you get this kind of uh, training screen that starts from the beginning and it gives you an overview of why we're doing this task. Not the best formatting, that is blurry. So it tells you what you're going to cover. First one, it gives you an intro to what the... These pop ups. So, the first mechanic we'll focus on is smoothness. Tasks in this category are structured to train your aim regard, regarding your ability to move your mouse in fluid motions without unwarranted jitter. Fine, we get that. Tracking is super important. But this task is super, super difficult. And if you don't get three stars, you don't get to progress. So, I'm just going to show you how hard this is. For someone like me, anyway, that's not great at this. And I guess I need to improve. But Firstly, it's only aiming on the body, not the head. And just watch, like, my tracking in the other one wasn't bad, but my goodness, this is, to get it to hit that tiny line, it's re and actually this is a lot easier since I uh, changed my sensitivity to the one it recommended, so that's a good sign. You know, I'm, I'm, I picked the recommended sensitivity from playing a few times and I seem to have a lot more accuracy, which is good. But it is hard. Like, that is a small target and I'm having to move quite a bit. Is it a... Maybe it's changing the sensitivity still, I'm not sure. So, look. Oh, it did do the sensitivity as well. So that's also quite interesting. It's still, you do, You can turn it off, by the way, if you didn't want to do it, but it's still trying to find my sensitivity. So for that one, it thinks it should be a lot lower. Personally, I don't agree with that, and I, I think I'm quite comfortable with what it's suggested. But as I said, you've got to keep doing these things. So the next step is going to... Clicking it, also known as click timing, is, uh, is what the general player base refers to as flicking. So it's giving you the, the, the descriptions of the fundamental types of gameplay and what you would do. And you're kind of reading through it, learning a little bit about it. Break it down into two categories, static clicking and dynamic clicking. Uh, fixed targets, moving targets. And then you go straight into the, into the task. And you, you do quite a few. So look, if I was completely new to the game and I'd not done any prior learning, I had no prior knowledge... This is actually really useful, but if I'm perfectly honest, I actually think most people, they just jump into a game and they get used to it and they realise it's difficult. Then they go on YouTube and they watch videos. The majority of this information is available in a video, and actually some of this stuff, it's like it's been pulled directly from YouTube uh, videos that teach you this stuff. So do I think it's worth it? I think if you're a brand new player, then yeah, it probably is worth it for the you know the one month that you might choose to, to, to pay for it but really what I think is worth it is the sense finder I think if you are trying desperately hard to improve your aim and find out what sense works for you 
then this is the this is the way to do it because you can just play let me go you can just play this playlist you can play it over and over and over and it's gonna eventually get used to how you play and it's gonna pick a sensitivity that works for you and you'll get more confident with your kind of flicking you'll get more confident with your quick fire aiming and you're just going to generally improve at the game but what it's not going to teach you is that kind of movement mechanic because i'm standing still this hand doesn't even need to be on the keyboard i can do this and still play so it's not teaching me the the one thing that i think many people take for granted in cs2 and every other counter strike prior to that is this movement Everyone's played FPS games before. If you come into Counter-Strike, you've probably played Call of Duty, and the movement is completely different. Running and gunning does not work. Having to be accurate while standing still is super important. But you still have to think about dodging bullets and people's positioning. So look, you're not gonna learn those, those movement fundamentals from this. You're gonna need to find another way to learn that stuff suggesting a much lower sense than what i would have expected but that is aim labs plus i bought it so you didn't have to so there you have it everyone that's aim labs plus as i said i bought it so you didn't have to i hope that it's helped you to make more of an educated decision on whether you think that's for you or whether it isn't if you'd like me to do a more in-depth video on some of the fundamental learning sessions or just show a little bit more of the universal sense finder and how it adapts I'm happy to do that. Please let me know in the comments. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button. As you know from every other YouTuber, it does help with the algorithm and I would super, super appreciate it. I also stream on YouTube and I do shorts and all sorts of other different types of content that you might enjoy. If you want to check out more of my videos, I'm going to put some on the side here for you to, to watch. Hopefully it is that side. And if you do want to hit subscribe and go straight to my channel, you can do that by clicking this uh, this link down here thanks everyone for watching i really really hope it's helped please be kind when you're out there in the game and i will catch you sometime in the future cheers all